Well, I like the word you used there, Dave, was system. Because when we talk heat pumps at Valent, we talk systems because it's a bit about everything, the generator, the controls, and indeed the property. The property would be part of that system and the customer requirements. It's really important that you know, want to know what the customer wants, what they're going to get out of the system, that you get all that in, in the plan first and then work out a system. And this system really is to work on the glycol side of the system that can create issues when you're putting a brand new system in that hasn't got what we call a hex unit, which is a, effectively a cut to the system. Um, and it enables in, in some cases where we can use some of the, utilize some of the standard pipe work that's already within the property. Now, I've heard that heat pumps are three times more efficient than a boiler. Is that absolutely true? If, if a system, de so three things, design, 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 would yeah. be if you design it right, yes, absolutely, three times more efficient. Um, the, the problems come in with the heat losses within the property. If it's a conservation air, for example, you just can't get the level of insulation in, things like that will drop off. But certainly, in most cases, I would say it'd be twice as, twice as efficient as a gas boiler. Uh, you mentioned insulation there. How much insulation is required? I mean, is that, I know it's a bit of a how long is a piece of string yeah. question, but... <laughs> it's, I mean, you're really looking two to 300 mil in, a, in an attic, for example. Uh, I basically say the rule of thumb is if you've got something in it that's up to the rafters, try and double it. Um, cavity insulation, absolutely essential. If you haven't got cavities, you've got solid walls, that brings a different array of problems along, and really a heat pump might not be the option at that point. Um, and of course, just general double glazing or triple glazing if the, if the budget warrants, all of that will reduce the size of the heat pump required, which would effectively bring the price, the capital cost down. Uh, you said it could be two to three times more efficient, so why isn't everyone fitting them? A few of the reasons I've already mentioned. One is the size of the unit. Yeah. I mean, you would, I, I would, you know, it's not quite a big be, unit. To be fair. Not trying to be derogatory, but most ladies, women, to look at this and say, I don't want that in my garden, sort of thing. But it's a generator. It's got a, a, a fan coil in it to pull air through the system for the heat exchanger. It's also got a compressor in there. They emit noise. If you're in the middle of the country, that's going to be more noticeable. And if you've got neighbours nearby, they need to be taken into consideration. So really common sense. We do some tools uh, within our, our company, our MIS 020 tool. You can take a few measurements, put it into the tool, and it will tell you whether you can fit this under permitted development or right. whether you need to go to full planning. But I would always advise you to let the planning office know that you intend fitting one because they all interpret the rules a little Slightly bit differently. Different, yeah. But there are no restrictions as such uh, on, on siting external unit or not? Um, not really. Um, obviously outside. Um, yeah. I've had, heard everything that people want to do in a conservatory, for example. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, but it, it, I've heard cases around them, and I, but they, when you bring the temperature down within the case, that affects the efficiency. But it's, you need the room for it, obviously. Yeah. There are minimum distances from walls. Now, I've heard everything over these few days. I've heard someone say three metres. 120 mil is the, is the minimum gap okay. for our system. But there are service issues if you're close to another yeah, wall. So you need to be getting the front off to, to give it an annual service. Now, a lot of people are going to have existing heating systems in place. Is this compatible with that? Absolutely. Such? In terms of your installer, any installers that are maybe thinking, oh, should I get into this or not? You've got 99% of the skills already. Because right. the way we're going to put this system in doesn't differ a lot from most systems. Where it will differ from what we, we currently know and have been taught all our lives is we're working with much lower temperatures. So therefore, we have to be more observant on the pipe work that we put in. In some cases, it will be larger. In others, we'll be putting larger rads in or even going the whole hog, take all the rads out and put underfloor heating everywhere throughout the house. Because so, the lower the temperature, the better so the system. But there are plumbing similarities anyway. Absolutely. It they, they should be frightened of anything that you need to do with a heat pump. OK, so tell us you've got a box of tricks here. Just to yes, a little box of tricks here. This um, is our command unit. This, right. is, this is for the installer. Yep. And this little screen on here is what he would use. So there's nothing for the homeowner. The homeowner, just around the corner, which so we're, we're looking at in a minute. minute. We're looking yeah, in a minute. Yeah. So basically all my wire into the whole system here. We can do a number of systems with this, a fully filled glycol system with the hex unit to cut the system to use part water in the system. And we would wire everything in along here. They're all color coded, PE uh, plugs. They can't be mixed up and put in the wrong place, unless you, well, even if you're color blind, because they just physically okay. don't go in. So you get, if we assist you throughout the entire system, you'll be getting a wiring diagram, hydraulic plan, 
and a setup for this screen. And you would put into this screen all the information for your system, the demand temperatures on it, the customer comfort conditions, your hot water temperature required. Um, and in the hybrid system that we are launching later this year, yeah. you'd be putting your fuel tariffs in because if okay. you've got an older property with an oil boiler, a gas boiler, and the property isn't conducive for a heat pump alone, we can get this to work out which is the cheaper technology to use to give you your comfort conditions. And, and is this an easy hand-holding step-by-step guide through, as it were? It is. It's what we call an installation assistant. It's, it starts with what language do you want to use okay. right through to what is your fuel tariff. And we even give you a chart to work out the fuel tariff for between your electric and your fuel. Now, obviously, installers need training, um, which yes. they can get from Plum Center. In fact, Easy MCS, uh, Adam, who's standing right over there at the back there, he's waving. He is actually standing up. He really is that Hi, tall. Uh, he, we've got an offer on for the rest of the uh, show. We've had it for the whole show that if you want to get some Easy MCS training, you get a discount on that. Have a word with Adam, and he can sort that out mm -hmm. for you. Okay, so carry on here. We've got talk us through a bit more of the okay, detail. Okay, so this would also be used as part of his commissioning agent. He would commission the whole system with this. He wouldn't really need to show the homeowner anything on here at all. Right, so it does need commissioning, absolutely. just to be clear. Right. Commissioning is okay. absolutely crucial to get the system we designed. We put those parameters into this system, and the net result is you'll be delivering what you promised. Right, okay. Or uh, very close to it, where you, there won't be this vast difference, which we've had some horror stories in the past that we've all read in the trade presses where things have gone wrong. And it's normally during the development stage, something's changed in either the building or within the plumbing side, and A hasn't talked to B, C is that the system doesn't work as intended. Now, you mentioned earlier about access for servicing. How often do you need to service this system? The annual service for this, we still recommend as a manufacturer. There's no statutory requirement for a heat pump right. service because everything in there is sealed. There's yep. very little to do, but we've got pumps and Working pieces. Working pieces. So the biggest thing in here is the evaporator. Keeping the evaporator clear of, of dirt because we're pulling air through the evaporator, we can get a build-up. And if you get a build-up, air doesn't travel through, the efficiency drops. So your installer would come along, take the top off, take the side off, this front pulls out, and they would use high-pressure air, or if it's a refrigeration guy, he's probably going to use hydrogen, just to clear the debris out of that right. system. And really, for that, this is it. Then this system backs that up technically you can look at all your temperature sensors pressures flow rates through the system it will give you a liters per hour that you're pushing through the system so you can check that the pumps working correctly it will check the fan for you you can turn it on turn it off you can do everything in there but if you've got a hybrid system you'll have a boiler on that system as well that obviously needs a service right. so i would say it's almost an opportunity if you weren't servicing the boiler before you put a hybrid system in, you have that opportunity as well. Now, obviously, in terms of RHI, you're going to need metering. Metering for a hybrid system is absolutely essential. You can't claim the RHI unless you have a meter. I will quickly Can show you the meter over here. Um, basically, your meter, this isn't something we produce. Um, we do have a metering system built in to our unit, but it hasn't been ratified as something that would to use to claim the RHI. So this is a standard meter. There's a temperature sensor in this unit itself, which is mounted on the return of the system. And it has to be before any system cut. So it's as close as you can get it to the heat pump. You then have to put another sensor into the flow side of the system. So this will be looking at the temperature you're producing, the temperature that's coming back, and the flow meter will work out how much volume's going through the system. And from that, you can ascertain how many kilowatt hours you're producing throughout the year. And that's what your RHI payment will be based on. Right. What you're delivering from the unit. OK, I'm going to show an example of an EPC and RHI payment in a moment. But I just wondered, is there anything else you want to say about the homeowner and the The, the uh, homeowner we, we thought of, because putting everything on that one control would potentially be an issue. So we've, this is a pretty standard heating control. We've had this on the market for uh, a few years now. And we've worked from a simple turn control for the customer, turn it clockwise, the temperature demand will go up, turn it anti-clockwise, it will go down. I do apologize for this not working because we can't do an RF version with this at the moment. It has to be hardwired in. The two buttons you see either side of the toggle will just be menu buttons, just like your mobile phone. So when you press a button, it will ask you a question you can say you want to activate the t temperature, for example, and then turn the dial and change the temperature. 
one of the unique features of this system is when your installer has set it up for you, he may have put your comfort temperatures in to his liking or what he thinks you want. Okay. And rather than getting back to reprogram those times in, every time you change the temperature, the system will ask you, do you want to permanently change this temperature to all time periods for comfort? So you could change it every time you change it? Every you time you do it, it right. you can use okay. it simply as an on-off stat if you wanted to do that, because there's plenty of people out there, we show them how this works and they say, how do I turn it off? Brilliant. And incidentally, it's not good practice to turn heat pumps off. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. Let the temperature outside decide when the heat pump no longer needs to produce heat. because. The biggest wear on a heat pump is its warm-up phase. Not okay. saying that it, it wears it out, but right. it has about 100,000 starts before it starts to wear out. But the longer you can keep it working, the more efficient the system's going to be. Uh, and for you, what's the unique thing about this particular product? The say? unique thing about this product is the system, because it's so adaptable. Because it is a system. Because it is a system. We can use this as a standalone heat pump system, fill it entirely with glycol. Great for new build, because you can design a house around it. For the most of the installers that I deal with on my training days on a day-to-day -day basis are doing refurb work. Right. This just opens a few more avenues to those type of properties where you can't use one fuel alone, or sorry, a heat pump alone to heat the property. It brings another phase in where you can say to a customer, look, if you want to do your bit for the environment, you can, but it, there will be an outlay for that. But you can enable them maybe to get another two or three years use out of an older boiler they've got before they need to replace that one. And they're also then future-proving their property, if you like. Brilliant. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thanks for that.